What's good, I'm Matt Jumper, and in this video, I'm gonna answer the question I always hear, can you build large or complex websites in Framer? And to be honest, it's not always in the form of a question. It is often in the form of a statement because a lot of people think that you can't do this. We've seen a lot of large sites built in Framer. Whereby, Carbon Direct, these are just two that I've personally built myself. There's also Molly, RocketX, Rive, Ecomflow, Superhuman, and a bunch more on the Framer gallery. Layouts, interactions, and animations. I wanna start with this because it's actually the least, I guess, controversial. Like, I don't think anyone's really debating this point too much. So I'm just gonna get this out of the way first because I think as far as creating super custom layouts, interactions, and even now 3D animations, there's really not much you can't do in Framer. This is a site I built for the Framer Masterclass 2.0, which by the way is available now. So if you wanna learn how to build this entire site from scratch, check out the link below. But all of these things can be done natively in Framer without code, and my personal favorite thing without a developer telling you that it can't be done. But as far as the interactive components go, you can get really complex, as I've said, but to be honest, there is a point where if you're building out like an interactive component with a lot of states and connections, for example, this Lightbox gallery that I built for a client, building this like from scratch in Framer without any code, it can get tedious. So can it be done? Yes. Will you maybe get frustrated? Maybe, but nevertheless, it is possible. The next thing would be leveraging components. So in my opinion, and I pretty much talk about this in every one of my videos, components are Framer's biggest superpower. I use components in every site I make to keep things consistent, keep it fast for workflow. But when building large websites, especially components are essential. I tend to take the approach of nesting a lot of components um, inside of each other and then configure rather complex configurations using variables, conditions, et cetera. So it can be controlled on the canvas. So it's a bit of work up front, but it ends up making your life or your clients or your teammates life so much easier. But yeah, this is the key to making like a big website that's complex as far as the content goes and maybe like connections of this content. It's creating these customizable components, connecting the data to the framer CMS or feeding up to the canvas and then allowing you to just take this component and drag and drop it on any page and configure it from there. So when I quote large websites or any website for that matter, I'm not looking at pages. I am looking at components, how many of those I actually need to make, how they need to be configured to be customizable, and then what dynamically is being populated from the CMS or from the canvas. And that brings me to my next topic, which is the CMS. So Framer CMS, generally speaking, I know a lot of people think that it is rather simple, but I still think it packs a punch, especially with all the filters and conditions that you can set. So most people, when they hear CMS, they think about blogs, which is fair. It's probably the most common use case. I'm going to start there and show you on the site. I made a category landing page for each of the different categories. And on top of this kind of custom dropdown that I made, we have a unique color for each of the categories. And then we have a featured post. And then underneath that, we have different levels of content. So we have a grid of six and then a list of all the rest of the content. And then inside the post, there's a bunch of cool stuff going on um, in the post itself. But at the bottom, we have a list of tags and the author. So the tags are dynamically set from the CMS and the authors are the same thing. So that means all of these links, if you click on it, you're going to get a list of all the posts under this tag. And then the same thing for the author, you're going to get all the posts from this author and we've also set up, you know, the author info, the name, um, the photo, social links. All of this is dynamically generated from the CMS without any code overrides. You can also get really creative with other scenarios of the CMS and do some like non-conventional things, like use it to host your icon library. For the whereby site, I actually hosted all the content for the navigation in the CMS and used a bunch of conditions to basically hide and show and configure what that looks like based off of the content in there. Next, we have localization and search. This is a quick thing. Adding a search functionality to your site is literally as simple as dropping in a native framework component and it works pretty flawlessly right out of the box, which, you know, when I would be quoting out adding a search functionality to a site, there would be a lot more time put it into that than just dragging a search icon into the canvas. So that's pretty cool and pretty effortless. And with localization features, I know it can be expensive, but it can give you all the customization you need to give a unique experience per language and not just translating text with AI, which is itself really cool, but it also displays unique content and components based on the language the user is selected. And next we have code overrides and components. So when native features are limited and to be honest, yeah, they can be, you can always leverage or create custom code overrides and components 
using React. And that doesn't mean you need to know how to code in React to leverage these things. You can literally copy and paste a bunch of components and code overrides that people in the framework community have created and have shared. Some of it is free, some of it is paid, but either way that work is done for you and it's as simple as dragging and dropping. But the community is great for this. There's always new stuff coming up. I also love to use AI to build custom components and overrides. So if you pay for ChatGPT4, you can use Framer GPT, which is a chatbot that Joe at Framer today has trained to be hyper-specialized in writing components and overrides in Framer. Using just regular ChatGPT can work, but it's not the greatest. It's still possible, depending on, I guess, how complex you're gonna get. But in this Bark site, I do use some code overrides. In a couple spots, you can see there's pagination, the share on social functionality, truncating text, and the progress bar on the blog page, which can be done natively, by the way. But all these things were built by either other creators that have leveraged or by myself using ChatGPT. The pagination and the progress bar code overrides specifically, um, a good example of something that can be done natively, as I just said, but the code overrides are usually a bit less tedious and easier to scale, as long as you can kind of get that code working properly. So next is third-party integrations. So I know there are a few bigger things that Framer lacks native support for, or sometimes their native version of something isn't like super built out and you want more customization or more depth to it. But just like with code overrides and components, there are a bunch of people in the community making their own third-party integrations or kind of more harder working components. So for example, we have Framer Auth by Danny Sapio to create member-only content. We have Magic Form by Joris Rude to create super custom forms, which I use personally, it's awesome. And Framer Commerce by yours truly to integrate Shopify into Framer, which by the way, is getting some big updates soon, including a free version. So keep an eye out for that. But on that note, all of these are third party and some of them do have costs associated with them. But the question here is not, can I build complex websites for free? It's, can I build complex websites? So keep that in mind. So what's next? The first thing is remember that we're still super early in the days of Framer. The product is scaling so fast and the community is growing exponentially. There's just so much momentum around everything. There's big updates coming soon to the CMS. This year, there should be a bunch of new updates. And at some point soon, dare I say, the much anticipated CMS API is gonna drop. It's, it's bound to happen soon. We also have a plugin store coming sometime this year, which is gonna open up the door to great new features and integrations. Again, more stuff from the community of, of people building around all those gaps that you might be thinking about right now. This is gonna help, especially I think for workflow and as well as these like bigger gaps for these more complex sites. Anyways, I'm super excited about the future of Framer. If any of you have any Framer video requests or questions about specific complexities that you aren't sure about, drop it in the comments below and I'll be sure to reply to them. And don't forget to like, subscribe and all that jazz and I'll see you all soon.